I have often heard my mother say that she was at the time the most beautiful child she had ever seen, and shewed signs even then of a gentle and affectionate disposition. These indications, and a desire to bind as closely as possible the ties of domestic love, determined my mother to consider Elizabeth as my future wife, a design which she never found reason to repent. From this time, Elizabeth Levenza became my playfellow, and as we grew older, my friend. She was docile and good-tempered, yet gay and playful as a summer insect. Although she was lively and animated, her feelings were strong and deep, and her disposition uncommonly affectionate. No one could better enjoy liberty, yet no one could submit with more grace than she did to constraint and caprice. Her imagination was luxuriant, yet her capability of application was great. Her person was the image of her mind, her hazel eyes, although as lively as a bird's, possessed an attractive softness. Her figure was light and airy, and though capable of enduring great fatigue, she appeared the most fragile creature in the world. While I admired her understanding and fancy, I loved to tend on her as I should on a favourite animal, and I never saw so much grace both of person and mind united to so little pretension. Everyone adored Elizabeth. If the servants had any request to make, it was always through her intercession. We were strangers to any species of disunion and dispute, for although there was a great dissimilitude in our characters, there was a harmony in that very dissimilitude. I was more calm and philosophical than my companion, yet my temper was not so yielding. My application was of longer endurance, but it was not so severe whilst it endured. I delighted in investigating the facts relative to the actual world. She busied herself in following the aerial creations of the poets. The world was to me a secret, which I desired to discover. To her it was a vacancy, which she sought to people with imagination.